Hello everyone and welcome to a page a day where today we are turning a new page of life. Amen. My name is Jay Page. Welcome if you're new to this channel and hello to all my subbies. How y'all doing? I haven't been on here in a minute uh, because of work. You know the nine to five life. Um, but I'm believing by faith that I'll be free of that so that I can be on here more and do more for God like I really desire to. But I'm glad to be on here talking to you all again. It's an honor and a privilege. Um, I do not come on here just to say things that sound good or to make up things. Um, I only like posting when the Holy Spirit prompts me to, um, tells me to. Other than that, I don't just like like talking just to talk. Um, I want to make sure that it's Holy Spirit led. This is a video that I have like kind of been afraid of doing just because um, I like the fact that I'm on here and that people don't know I'm on here. Um, not that I'm trying to hide, but just because I know I knew that when I made my YouTube channel, I wanted to be very transparent with my testimony and things that I've been through. And, um, you know, sometimes you just don't want people who know you in passing or know of you to know all of your business. And you don't want people to try to use things against you and, you know, try to go back in years past and try to make connections and things like that. Um, so this is kind of like my safe space, but um, this is also a way for you all to kind of like understand maybe why I'm so passionate about what I believe and um, why I'm on here. I'm on here because I've been through so much. There are people that I'm supposed to help um, in similar situations. And um, being on YouTube, is one of the ways that I can help. I don't know why I feel like I'm about to cry. Um, so, um, as you can tell by the title, or maybe not, I don't know what I'm gonna title this. You might be able to tell, you might not, but <clears throat> um, yeah, so I used to have a pornography addiction. Uh, I don't think anyone in my family knew. I hid it from them pretty well. Um, I was first introduced to pornography when I was maybe 12 or 13 i found it on i was not looking for it um just to give you all the quick background um everyone in my family knew how pure i was and how i protected my purity i protected my innocence i didn't find out what sex was until i was 16 years old um and i would have waited until i was 18 or 20 but because all the kids are talking about it at school i figured you know let me just ask my dad what it is so i can know what these kids are saying and so I can know the correct things about it versus what kids at school are telling me so at 16 I asked my dad what it was and after that I was like don't tell me nothing else <laughs> I don't want to know nothing else about it um I wanted to play with Barbie dolls as long as I could baby dolls like I just my Polly Pocket Castle like I wanted to be that pure kid as long as I could I never tried to grow up fast I didn't like that um, I really liked being innocent and I really liked being ignorant of a lot of things that adults know. I really held that dear, you know, the fact that I was ignorant of so many things. Um, so just to give you some background, but I was on the computer. I used to just, you know, be on the family computer a lot, maybe on YouTube or playing, you know, games online. And I went to our media player, you know, back then you could, um, you know, put your CDs in the computer and then it was saved to like the media player. So I went on the media player because I know we had like some, you know, gospel music and stuff saved on there. And when I went on the media player, up popped this pornography video. 
and I immediately clicked off of it. So obviously the video had been saved on there. Um, I immediately clicked off the video. I was very, mind you, you know how my mind was very innocent and pure. I had never seen anything like that or even thought about anything like that. So I was very disturbed, very disturbed. Um, and as soon as my parents got home, I told them and they were like, what, what are you talking about? And then they went, you know, looking on the computer search history and they started seeing all these websites and obviously it was one of my siblings who had been looking at it um and of course that sibling denied 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 but um that's how it started um maybe a year after that or so i can't really remember but it was between the ages of 12 and 13. Um, my grandfather, someone who I used to consider my best friend, um, I just looked up to him so much when I was a kid and I thought it was so cool that my dad had a dad. I know, I know that's weird, but I thought it was so cool. I'm like, wow, this is my dad's dad, but I loved my grandfather when I was a little girl um, until the day that he exposed his private area to me. He didn't touch me or anything like that. He just exposed himself to me. And I was very taken aback. So early on, this per this perverted curiosity um, was trying to influence me. It wasn't until later on, I, I wrestled with why did my granddad do that? Um, as I got older, I began to understand generational curses and things like that. And of course the enemy trying to repeat things in me, but I didn't understand when I was a little girl. No one asked me if I was okay. No one, checked in on me uh they kind of just hushed it quieted it um they didn't want to talk anymore about it when i told them i was willing to confront my grandfather myself i was i've always been a very bold person a very direct and outgoing person and i never had an issue standing up for myself um but they didn't want me to do that so after that video at first i was like very very disgusted in all of that saying like with my grandfather like i just felt like why are all these things like coming at me um but not but putting what happened with my grandfather aside just focusing on um how i came across that video and shortly after that i start um i didn't no shortly after that i started looking up things myself and at first it started on like youtube so it wasn't like naked things or anything like that but it progressed into porn sites and all of that um so it was a, a very um just show you how the enemy works because you don't even have to go looking for these things and god knew and maybe even the enemy knew how much I value my innocence. And it, it just disgusted me that I had this big, huge secret just eating away at me. I felt like year after year after year after year, so many attacks in my home. Now, this is just one result, result of the Jezebelic attack that was on my family. Okay, so since I was 10 years old, that's when I really started noticing a Jezebelic attack on my family. And of course I didn't know that it was a Jezebelic attack and not until I was um, 23 years old. Okay. So, but that's a whole nother testimony um, about how I was able to conquer the Jezebel spirit. That's a whole nother video. But right now I'm just going to focus on like the, uh, the addiction part. It grew, it grew, it grew like... I would even be um, like in public be looking up stuff and like it is just crazy how um, that stuck with me and and sparked a perverted curiosity. So I wrestled with it between the ages of I think it started around 12, 13, 14 and all the way through recently up until like two years ago um i went um so when i graduated college so 
all through college I was heavily addicted to pornography um I would even I'm talking quiet because I'm in my apartment and it's late um I would even like miss events with my friends and outings with my friends because I would feel so guilty that I was doing that and when I was in college I had this whole like I'm better than y'all because y'all out here having sex and drinking and y'all doing this. Y'all in same sex uh, relationships. And I just thought I was so better um, because I don't do any of that. But I was no better because I knew what I was doing in my dorm rooms and in the apartments and stuff. I was no better. Um, and then I would, you know want to walk around acting like I was just reading the Bible all the time and I was the biggest hypocrite I knew but I learned that from in my home how to be a hypocrite you know um but anyway when I graduated college I uh I rededicated my life to Christ I had this epiphany and I just looked back over my life and I was just tired of all the hell that I was going through I was tired of having this this thorn in my side of uh, pornography and I couldn't talk to anybody. I never told anyone. I let th that thing torment me. Um, and I never spoke out about, spoke out about it. I never told anyone. There were probably, there was probably one adult in my life who probably had an idea. Um, Cause she kind of caught me a few times, not really, um, but I know that because she was a woman of God and she probably knew, but just maybe didn't say nothing to my mom or anything. Um, but other than that, nobody had any idea or what whatsoever. Um, so after I rededicated my life to Christ, I went two and a half to three years without watching pornography, right? Um, most of that due to because before I had moved out of the house where I experienced all that hell, um, while I was still there, I was praying every day. I was the closest I had ever been to the Holy Spirit. I mean, we were one. I We were one, okay? 2019, the end of 2019, I want to say, that it um it sparked up again. And something that um, I thought was done with, here was again. And I'm like, how could I go like almost three years, no desire to watch and look at it, nothing like that. And then here it is like back and strong, right? So between 2019, um, all through 2020, pretty much up until the end of 2020, I was still watching pornography i would i would feel so sorrowful because i know that god sees everything and i had because i had experienced god so intimately i felt like my whole insides was being like like I was being gutted. I just felt like this wretchedness inside this twisting this. I felt like death. I felt like death. I felt like death. I wasn't even enjoying it. It was just a demonic habit at that point. And I said, why do I keep turning to this instead of God? I tried everything. I tried like putting the devices out of my room at nighttime because it will only be at nighttime. It will only be at nighttime. And I wrestled, I wrestled, I wrestled, I wrestled with it. And I was still taking um, ministry dates at churches, singing on praise teams. And um, one thing the Holy Spirit told me, because I did, I just felt so, because I was, I felt so filthy in God's presence. How can I even fix my mouth to say that I love you, to say that I honor you, to... But why, why do I have to keep repenting and asking for forgiveness for the same thing when I know, I'm like, I know you, Lord. Holy Spirit, you speak to me and I'm still betraying you. And the Holy Spirit said, I have you during the day, but Satan has you at night. And it was true. And I will wake up some days and I will be 
before God, worshiping, pouring my heart out, just loving on God and all of that. And that same night, looking up websites. And it was just a slap in the face to God. It was a slap in the face. And I just got to the point where it's like, I started getting scared at one point because once again, remember, like I had gone years without it and for it to resurface the way it did, like I thought I would never deal with it again. I was scared. Like, you know, at one point I was kind of letting the enemy convince me like I will always be that way. Like that I can never truly get free. And oh, well, God understands. Like it's whatever God understands. Like sometimes I'm just going to be in the mood for it and it's whatever. Like it's fine. Like I was allowing the enemy to convince me of these things because I felt powerless and it started to freak me out at one point. Um, But the Holy Spirit reminded me that it was a choice and that I was very much in control because before I would sing on Sundays that weekend or the the Friday or Saturday before I would say I'm not gonna look at it and I won't look at it because I will say when I go to church and I'm on that stage singing I don't want any guilt I don't want any images playing in my mind I don't want any um condemnation or shame i just want to be able to worship god freely knowing that i was i've been living pure you know and i told myself i'm not gonna do it and i didn't do it and that's when the holy spirit said you you're choosing you're choosing it's no longer an addiction it's a choice and that's when I realized if I have the willpower to say no, because I have church the next day, then I can say no every day. Right. So what what final thing, mind you, every time I fell, I got back up and, re and, and returned to Christ. Every time I fell, I went to God. Every time I fell, I went to God. Every time I fell, I fell, went to God. I fell, I went to God. I never, ever, 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 ever let um went without repentance like every time i went right back to god and about every time every time and it was breaking it was breaking my heart and i knew i was breaking god's heart and i'm like you have to stop one night this is this is what made me in for good and i have not looked back since god told me one night he said, if you continue to look at this, because there was no more grace for me. And that's what he told me. There's no more grace for you in this area. Years ago in college and all that, before you got delivered and before you, you know, knew things, the things that were attacking you and all of that, you were in the dark. There was grace for that. It was never condoned. God will never condone our sin. He had grace and mercy on me because he knew I was going through some things. But he said, now that you know, there's no more grace for you. And God said, if you look at this again, the enemy will try to put a sickness on you and he will have the legal right to do that because you're willingly making a choice to watch this. And after God told me that, I said, I'm not doing it again. That's it. I'm done. Because remember, I said, like, I wasn't even enjoying it anymore. It was just like, why am I doing this? This is so stupid. This is sick. This is. This is crazy, right? Um, after God told me that, I sobered up and I was like, okay, God, we, I'm done. I'm done. I want to say a few nights after that, I got this really strong temptation. And I went and I got my device and I sat there. And the Holy Spirit reminded me, if you do this, the enemy will try to put a disease on you. And I, I threw that device across the room and I said no and I started praying and I went to sleep. I have not looked back since. And I want to say that was uh, at the end of last year. That was the end of 2020. And I have not looked back since. Haven't had a desire, nothing. 
I, I mean, God has completely renewed and restored me. I don't have no fear of that returning because I am so God renewed me. He transformed me. He just changed my mind. I can't even believe I used to do that. Um, and even if the devil tries to replay images in my head or remind me, I'm like, you're a liar. You need to go. Them thoughts can go to the pit of hell. You can go right along with them because there's no way. God started showing me to look at the end result. See, if you are dealing with an addiction, the enemy will remind you of how it feels while you're in the action of doing the sin. But what you need to think about is how you feel after. If you always remember how you feel after, if you always remember the end result, that will keep you from doing it. Because there have been times where I said, yeah, and if I do it, I'm going to feel like death afterwards. Not only that, the, the enemy will have rights to put a sickness or whatever he can on me because I will then have opened the floodgate. And when you do that, after you have said, I'm not doing it, they come back seven times greater and they try to make it count. Because they know they're not going to have no more choices because they know you belong to God. So they want to make that one chance count. And that's why the Holy Spirit urged me. It was a gentle way that he said it. But he, it was a gentle, it, but it was stern. You cannot look at this anymore. Basically saying the devil wants you dead. And that will be the death of you. So that's what I always thought about. I don't want to feel like death. I don't want to walk around not being able to look people in the eye. Because I know what I was doing the night before. And I'm supposed to be a woman of God. And I said, I can't keep breaking God's heart. I can't keep. That is a slap in the face. That is blasphemy. To say one thing with your mouth. And then go. And knowing knowing what you're going to do shortly thereafter. I, that was my conviction. I'm not speaking for nobody else. That was my conviction. And that is what has been keeping me. The love of the Father. The love of the Father. And I took that warning seriously. Sometimes illnesses and things like that are a result of sin. In, a, in an area where we have giving the enemy legal rights. Now, there are a lot of times, you know, we have grace and mercy and the devil will be like, all right, God, do you see what they're doing? I have grounds to attack them. And God will be like, no, grace and mercy. Grace and mercy, though, it's a point where it, it runs out. When you constantly say, no, I'm gonna do it. There's no more grace and there's no more mercy because now you're in the know. Now you know what you're doing. And it will get to a point where God will say, it's, I'm not, I'm not going to force, I'm not going to manipulate your will. So if this is what you want to do. I got to step back. And that's when the enemy will have legal grounds to come in and attack you and wreck your life up. You got to surrender everything to God. You know, um, I had to peel away layers and layers of why, um, you know, that, that was just a habit because I, I had already been delivered from the addiction when I rededicated my life to Christ. He took all of that out of me. He purged all that out of me. So it was no longer an addiction. I was in full control of that. I remember when it was an addiction, but it was no longer an addiction, you know. Um, but we have to surrender our all to God. He loves us so much and he does not want us to he jesus died on the cross for our addictions he really did all of that he took that he took on the cross was for every sin perversions immorality addictions diseases old new and future ones now this is not an easy journey it's not like 13 years, 13 years of, deal, of dealing with that spirit of lust, the spirit of perversion, um, a seducing spirit, um, 
all those things. And then later on, I had to renounce to come out of agreement with every spirit I connected with over the years watching pornography. Um, you know, it's a lot of witches online and everything. You just never know who you're connecting with. And, you know, those are things that you got to come out of agreement with as well. Um, but um, glory to God and all glory to God. Um, if you are feeling frustrated, you're feeling hopeless, and you think, I don't, I don't, you can't ever see yourself without your addiction, that's a lie from the enemy. It's a lie. He wants you to believe that. He wants you to believe it. And as filthy as you may feel, I mean, you should feel bad. It's a good thing. If, you, if you're feeling bad, it's a good thing. There's a lot of people out there who sin and do evil and have no remorse. But you are experiencing godly sorrow. You are experiencing how God feels about your sin. So if you are just like, oh, you're broken and you're just sorrowful. That's how God feels. He does not like sin. He does not like seeing his children engage in sinful acts. So if you are feeling like you're just so trapped, you don't have anyone to talk to, you can't tell your family because they're not going to encourage you and love you and support you. They're going to judge you. They're going to shame you, alienate you. I'm here. There are other people interceding for you that you might not even know. But I am as well. I always pray for people who have addiction, especially like this, who feel like they can't reach out and talk about it. You know, if that is something that you are, that you need prayer for, you can leave a comment on this video. I'll pray with you. I'll stand in the gap for you because I know exactly what you're going through. I know it. I know it. When I look at my, when I look at older pictures of when I was really, really heavy into it, like heavily addicted to it, I could even see like that demonic spirit on me in pictures like i had a darkness in me and around me and now i just see like such light in me um and it, it's a very very freeing life when you surrender your all every time you mess up you get back up and you go to god every time you fall repent every time every time Every time. I know I keep saying it, but I'm telling you what I did. Every time. No matter how bad you feel. Don't you let the enemy tell you, nope, it's going to be this way forever. God don't love you. He mad at you. And, you know, you're not going to be free because you do good and then you're right back where you are. And you a hypocrite. Do not let the enemy speak those lies to you. You are beloved. You are, you have strength. You have strength in Christ. You might not feel like it, but by faith, you have to just say, no, I'm, I'm more powerful than this. God is so much bigger than pornography. Pornography looks like, like pornography ain't nothing to our God of the universe. It is nothing. There is nothing too great or too strong where God cannot intervene and wipe you clean and wash you of that and transform your mind and your heart where you like i don't even think about that no more once you are filled with the holy spirit number one and once you experience godly sorrow and once you see sin from god's eyes you have no desire to do it don't wait until it gets to a point where you are wrapped with a disease. You know, don't let it get to a point where, um, you know, something physically bad happens because of the sin, like nipping in the bud. If you are currently dealing with the illness or disease or things that are in your life, just hell wreaking havoc all through your life because of that. Repent. Repent before the Father. Renounce every demonic uh seducing python uh lilith jezebelic spirit every spirit that you came in agreement with when you watch the pornography you come out of agreement with it you renounce it you send them back to the pit of hell if you have to lay hands on yourself or get someone else you can trust to pray with you you do that and you watch god begin to peel back the layers and, and get deep in your heart and, and scoop all of that darkness out. And your life will begin to change. But you have to be willing to um, be long-suffering. 
sometimes um and you know some people have the testimony of they used to be addicted to smoking and things like that and god just miraculously took it away from them if you have the faith for that guess what god will do it he will miraculously take that desire away from you that perverted desire away from you and you'll be like i don't even want to do that stuff no more if you got to throw out magazines, books, stop following certain people on social media, those are the first steps you need to take. Don't be on social media at night. Don't be on the internet at night because you're just setting yourself up. Unfollow Instagram models who show all their body for the men or, you know, with the women, certain accounts, you know, you can't, whatever you need to do, whatever um, makes, you know, brings up that those lustful feelings in you. Those are things you need to disconnect from. Those are the things you need to disconnect from. You need to cling to real love. Real love is fulfilling. That's a high you don't never got to come down from. You don't feel bad when you come down from it. When you eventually come down from that high, you just feel at peace and at, at rest and you feel beautiful. You don't feel like, why did I do that? You know, you don't feel wretched. You just feel pure in God's presence. And then you might, you might, don't even look down on yourself. Don't look down on yourself. Don't don't um, tell yourself that you're worthless. No, come back to God. If you gotta crawl, I don't care how you do it. Just get back. Just get back before God and say, God, please, 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 please have mercy on me. Please, I repent for this sin. Take this away. I don't want this, God. Send me help, God. Give me something that will wake me up. Take it away, Lord. I don't want this. And then you do the steps that you need to do. You're going to have to unsubscribe from certain things and delete apps. And you, you might have to fast from Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and TikTok and all of that. Delete accounts. Delete subscriptions. But you got to do your part too. You do your part. You do your part in the natural and God will do the supernatural. He's going to add his super to your natural. So I'm going to pray for anyone dealing with um, pornography addiction. Um, it can feel like a python. A lot of times that spirit of lust manifests as spirit of python. It chokes the life out of you. It makes you, it gives you low self-esteem. Um, it perverts um, something beautiful that's between man and woman. You know, God created sex for the institution of marriage. And uh, that's where he honors sexual intercourse. And it is not meant to be perverted or used for any other. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's not meant to be perverted. And uh, pornography distorts all of that. It rewires your brain. It just does a lot of crazy things in you. And there can also, once again, be a lot of manifestations of illnesses in your body. If you feel like you're already at the point where an illness has uh, manifested or you feel it coming on, or don't be afraid. Okay? We got to take responsibility for what we have done. We repent. And then we stand on faith that because God loves you, he loves you. And it is not in his will, nor is it his desire to see you suffer. And he won't. You won't suffer for long. It might feel like it. But just stand on the fact that God loves you. He loves you. And every time you come back to him, he receives you with open arms like it's the first time every time. And he throws it into the sea of forgetfulness. He's not holding your past against you. So don't hold your yesterday against yourself. There are new mercies available to you every day. So Father God, right now, as I stretch my hand towards, towards the camera, God, I ask you will touch every person watching this video who is dealing with a pornography addiction, a loss addiction, Father God, sexual immorality, all of that, Lord. Somewhere along the line, there was a breach in the spirit for those who have forgotten where that breach happened, God pinpointed for, for them the moment where, where um, the lust first entered, Lord. Let's get to the root of it, Holy Spirit. Let's get to the root of it. Let them get to the root of it, Holy Spirit. 
so that they can identify what caused it and begin to heal from it, Lord. Send them um, godly counselors, send them godly friends and mentors who can pray with them and help them to break it, Lord. But if that's not available, and if that's not available to them, the Holy Spirit, send them to more people online, Lord, who will be able to steer them in the right direction, God. I ask, Lord, that you will continue to shower your mercy, shower your mercy, Jesus, on your children, God. You know what they have been through. You know the traumas they have been through to spark such a um, such a stronghold in their life, God. You know the generational curses, God, that they are that they are fighting and standing up against, God. God, you are powerful, you are merciful. And just as you stood by my side for years, God, I ask that you'll do the same for every brother and sister watching, God. Do the same for them, God. Let them not um, be ashamed to come to you and repent, God. Let them not be ashamed to praise you and to thank you, God, for another, for another chance, Lord. They are here for a reason. They are here for a reason. We know that the enemy wants to kill them. He wants to see them dead, God. But you, 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 I promise life and life abundantly, God. Every sin and addiction that they are dealing with was handled on the cross. It was handled on the cross and by Jesus' stripes, they were made free. They were made healed from every sickness of the mind, every sickness of the heart, Father God. Fill them right now, God. Fill them with love. Everyone watching this video, Lord, fill them. Touch their heart, Holy Spirit. Mend every broken part. Bring every piece back together. Transform their mind, God, where they have no desire to sin. Lord, that it breaks their heart to even think about sin in the name of Jesus. The things that they do at night, God. The things that they do at night, Lord. The things that, that are hidden, I ask God that you that they will not be exposed, God. That you will extend grace to them to get it right. Because we know that you don't expose them, Lord. We know that the enemy, the enemy wants to expose them. But I ask God, I pray for a special, a special grace for them, God. Because you, ne you never allowed the enemy to expose me, Lord. And I could have been. I could have been, Lord. And I ask that you will give more grace that they will not be exposed, Lord, but that you will give them time in private to get it right, God. They are sorry, Lord. They are sorry. They have. I, I pray for a godly sorrow that will come upon them, God. I pray that their heart will break for what your heart breaks for in Jesus' name. I pray that they will see sin the way that you see sin, God. And that every time, every time they will come back to you, God. I thank you for freedom in the name of Jesus. I thank you for breaking every demonic perversion over their life. Breaking it, shattering it. I choke every Jezebel spirit. I choke out every lustful, seducing spirit in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft spirit that has been working against them, I bind it in the name of Jesus. And I cast it to the pit of hell right now in the name of Jesus. You cannot have them you cannot have that brother you cannot have that sister you cannot have that man or that woman of god say that you cannot have them they belong to jesus christ and you know it and you know it i ask god that you will um, close that, that that my brothers and sisters will close every door Every gateway that they open to the enemy, that it is closed now in Jesus' name, sealed so that he no longer has legal right or authority to attack their mind, to attack their heart, or to attack their bodies. I thank you for freedom. I speak freedom, 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 freedom for them, for their children, for their children's children. In the name of Jesus, freedom, 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 freedom. Fill them with your light, Holy Spirit. Give them a, a way of escape. Give them a strategy, Lord. Specifically tailored to them. So that they may walk in your light and your freedom. And I thank you for this. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, I was turned to the wall. I was supposed to be turned here. I'm sorry. Um, but yes, I, I pray that over all of you. And uh, this video is...
very long, but it all needed to be said. I am excited for you all's freedom. And I pray that you, my prayers that you felt something break um, just now. God bless you all. I love you all. And I hope to be on here more. I got to get my time management together. But um, I will see you all in the next video. Um, God loves you and you are going to overcome this in the name of Jesus.